Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best selling author, and the only three time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com. Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast. This is your co-host, Seth Green. With me is the inventor of the infomercial and the original shark on the hit show, Shark Tank, Kevin Harrington. Kevin, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, Seth. Great to be here. I'm looking forward to our special guest today. Yes, we have the honor of our first, our second three-peat guest. Only two people have been on Sharkpreneur three times. Michelle Seiler Tucker is the best-selling author of Think and Grow Rich Today, Sell Your Business for More Than It's Worth. And her latest book that we're going to talk about is Exit Rich. She is featured regularly on Inc., Forbes, USA, Fox Business News, CNBC. She sold over 500 businesses and she's here to talk to us about her incredible experience and the new book, Exit Rich. Michelle, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Seth. Thank you for having me. And actually, our company sold over a thousand businesses. Yes, but I it says you personally, me personally have sold five hundred. Yeah, personally, five hundred. I was giving you all the credit. <laughs> well, Michelle, well, uh, let me start it off. It's, so, when as you've sold you know, these businesses, you know, when I was a young entrepreneur, I was a business broker. But I was selling pizza parlors, delicatessens, flower shops, that kind of stuff, and sold quite a few of of small businesses. What kind of businesses were you selling? So when I first started 20 years ago, little, so before I even got into mergers and acquisitions, I did franchise sales, franchise development, franchise consulting. Then I transitioned into selling businesses. Same thing, pizzerias, flower shops, laundry, mats, you know, things like that. But yep. then very quickly, within a couple of years, within two to three years, I transitioned and selling businesses over 10 million. Mm. So now we're selling manufacturing, distribution, logistics, staffing, you know, B2B, uh, any type of business, SaaS businesses, e-commerce businesses. Um, but our, my sweet spot is businesses uh, over $10 million. O- over so $10 talking. million purchase price? or Over $10 million purchase price. Yeah. And the EBITDA is usually over a million. Good. Yeah. That's a good niche because there you have you have sophisticated buyers that can make commitments. One of the challenges in selling smaller businesses, you spend six months with somebody and then you find out, well, they didn't have all the money they said they had or they didn't really want to own a business or they were right. never going to quit their job, et cetera, right? Yeah, we talk about that in Exit Rich. You know, we define the five types of buyers and 90% of Buyers are first-time buyers that are very slow to pull the trigger. They need a lot of reassurances to make them follow through with the sale. Uh, but we typically work with the private equity groups, the strategic competitors and sophisticated buyers. So business yeah. owners, we often all think that I'm going to sell my business one day and get rich or exit rich, or that's going to be my liquidity event. What are some of the things, because you talk about a number of things in the book that prevent that from actually happening and that we need to fix before we ever think about selling. Can you talk about some of those? Of course. So the biggest thing, you know, Steve Forbes says eight out of 10 businesses won't sell. And that's a true statement. And the biggest reason for that is because there is no plan. So business owners don't think about selling until they have to, typically due to a catastrophic event occurring, like health issues, death, partner dispute, or COVID, (laughs) you know, and then they think about selling, but by that time it's too late because the business is typically not doing well, it's trending downward. The best time to sell the business is when the business is doing well. I've been in this industry over 20 years, we've worked with thousands of sellers and I have never came across a seller that actually plans their exit out. So that's why you know the first couple of chapters in Exit Rich is dedicated to what we call the STGPS exit model. And that's really, you know, from day one of starting your business or buying a business, you need to plan your exit. And you need to figure out what is your desired end game? 
What's your destination? What do you want to sell your business for? The biggest problem is nobody has a plan. So business owners are driving around in circles, driving up and down the financial hills, ending up nowhere. And unfortunately, many of them are going out of business. And that's what we're trying to prevent. What kind of, um, what is the ideal uh, kind of business that, that you look for? I mean, I, I know you get phone calls, but I mean, do you, do you call companies also? And do you, do you, do you go after you know, businesses that aren't for sale, if you know, because you're, if you have a sophisticated buyer, that's got cash, they want to buy something, it may not be on the market. So do you, do you, do you, do you pursue opportunities that aren't listed already? You know, we, we have done that in the past, but really we work more with sellers, representing sellers, and we already have over 28,000 buyers. So we don't have a shortage of buyers whatsoever. There okay. are more buyers for good businesses to buy. There are more buyers for good businesses than there are actually good businesses to buy. But we use every single different marketing funnel from, you know, paid search to social media to the books, you know, to online speaking, you know, speaking events, et cetera. So we get a lot of referrals as well. The type of businesses that we really look for, you know, here's the bottom line. We specialize in buying, selling, fixing, growing. So if a business is not sellable, I, you know, depending upon the business, depending upon the owners, I partner with business owners. I invest money. I invest my expertise. I invest resources, et cetera, and put them on a build to sell program within three to five years. And I've done that many times over. So, but as far as selling businesses, you know, it really depends. I mean, we have so many buyers for those businesses that are over a million dollars in EBITDA because right. pegs, private equity groups, I mean, so many private equity groups are wanting to build, start platforms. They buy two ways, platforms and add-ons. And so there's really no shortage of buyers because once we get businesses over $3 million in EBITDA, we have all the private equity groups that we can go to. You know, there's, only tw there's over 2,500 private equity groups that we work with. Yeah. Well, yeah. One of the things that I experienced in the small deals, you, you know, like selling a a laundromat or something, right? People, there was generally owner financing because mm -hmm. the buyers a lot of times couldn't come up with all the cash. Right. Banks weren't owning the money. So right. on bigger deals, do, do, do you see owner financing also? You know, there is a portion of owner financing and I've been doing owner financing for over 20 years. There's a smaller portion because everybody wants skin in the game. So if we're going to go SBA, SBA wants the buyer to put up so much money. They want the owner to hold so much paper. Um, and then a lot of times if a buyer is going to buy a business, you know, $10 million and up, you know, the, the typical formula is 70% down and then the owner holds a note on the rest, but they're typically in second position, you know, um, after the bank. And there's not always a seller's guarantee on that or a buyer's guarantee, a personal guarantee. But yeah, you, there's, there's typically always a seller financing component of you, some you sort. You push for at least 70% down type of thing. Right? On the larger businesses, absolutely. On the smaller businesses, because our firm does handle small businesses. Um, my agents handle those. And, you know, we'll get, we typically won't take a deal for less than 30% down. We right. don't want our seller to, to, to do that because I think it's too risky. Right. Yeah. We want at least 30 to 40% down. You talk right. about you talked about not having a plan. What about uh, you talk <laughs> a lot about in the book about the having proper books? What does that mean to a business owner looking to sell? For example, I was looking at another deal yesterday where they came to me and said, I looked at the tax return and said, this says you're only making X. I couldn't even replace somebody. I couldn't hire a manager for that. Well, I don't really make that. I really make more than that. I'm like, well, you're not paying taxes on it, so it doesn't count. Well, Kevin can probably speak to this too. <laughs> one of the biggest issues on selling businesses has always been the financials. And when I wrote my, my first book, Sell Your Business for More Than It's Worth, you know, everybody's like, well, Michelle, isn't that, you know, isn't that kind of, you know, misleading that you're trying to sell a business for more than it's worth? I'm like, no, because based upon the tax returns, the business isn't worth anything. <laughs> so we really have to, to dig deep and do an evaluation. You know, we do very extensive evaluations here. We have a whole team of analysts. And so we do evaluations and we get the P&Ls, we get the tax returns, we get the cash flow statements, we get everything. And we go through the ANBACs, the personal expenses that are not necessary to run the business and the non-reoccurring. So most small business owners live out of their business. And unfortunately, most small business owners don't keep good records. So they really look at, you know, us, and I'm sure, Kevin, you went through this too, yeah. where they expect you to figure it out. Well, I'm not going to figure it out. They need to prove it to me. If they don't prove it to me, I'm not going to add it back. But we always go through the financials. It's called recasting the financials. And we add back the personal expenses and the non-reoccurring. 
because once we're done with that, they really are making money, but they have to prove it. You know, they can't just say, oh, I do this or oh, I do that. I got to see it in paper. I got to see it on paper, whether it's American Express bill, whether it's their bank statement, you know, something. But we will normalize the financials. What we won't do is add back cash. You know, if, if they're not, if they're not reporting their cash, that's on them. <laughs> what do you like best about what you do? What's that? What do you like best about what you do? Oh my gosh, I'm an entrepreneur. I mean, at any given time, I own five to 15 different companies. Uh, I build companies to sell. I've owned companies in many different verticals. I've sold businesses in pretty much every vertical. I'm just an entrepreneur. I'm like a kid in the candy store. You know, I can't wait to find out. Oh my God, this guy has an eighth grade education and he grew a multi, multi million dollar company that we're going to sell for $75 million. We got a company right now. This guy's got an eighth grade education. He grew this enormous company. Their EBITDA is $17 million. And we're already getting offers in, in between a 60 to $80 million range. So mm. I just, I, I'm so excited and so passionate about entrepreneurship and about business owners, you know, just like Kevin is with his um, infomercials and, and everything that he's done with all of his inventors. I'm just like a kid in a candy store. And I love saving small business too, because I don't know if you guys realize this, but when I wrote my first book in 2013 and did the research, you know, 95% of startups will go out of business. We all know that, right? That's mm -hmm. it's common sense. However, here's what you probably don't know. When I wrote Exit Rich with Sharon Lecter in 2019 and 2020, I did the same research. Did you re do you know that the business landscape has flip-flopped? It's now only 30% of startups go out of business, only 30%. But a whopping seven out of 27.6 million companies, those businesses that have been in business 10 years or longer, 70% of those companies will go out of business. Seven, zero, 70 percent. Now you hear about the public companies like Toys R Us in business 75 years, gone. Kmart gone, Stymart gone, Pier 1 gone. Godiva, our favorite chocolate, closed down 1,500 locations. Mm. So this is happening like crazy. So it's really my passion, my mission to try to help save, you know, small business because small business is a backbone of our economy, employing over half the U.S. workforce. Thank you, Michelle. Michelle um question because you know the title of the book exit rich so some tips from someone that owns a business because i saw this all the time people did not they, they bought the, they buy a business but they never thought about oh i got a plan for an exit and they would just think i'm gonna keep that business forever but 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 i think one of your comments here and 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 your recommendations is to show them how to exit and to exit rich, obviously. But what are some of the things people need to do um, after they buy a business so that they can plan for an exit? Right. Two big things. So number one, because we do want people to exit rich. So many people are exiting poor, and that's the issue. But number one is plan your, G I call it the GPS exit model. So whether you start a business or buy a business or you're just in business, you know, start with the end in mind. Right. When you want to drive somewhere, what do you do? You pull out your phone, you pull up Google Maps, you put in your destination, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what you should do with your business. You should put in your destination, your end game. What do you want to sell your business for? So let's say you want to sell your business for $20 million. Great. Now we got a number. A number is a start of a plan. Right. <laughs> and then you want to reverse engineer it. So now what do you need to know in a GPS exit? You need to know where you're starting from. You need to know what is your current valuation? What is your business worth? Today, now, Kevin, you probably know this as much as I do. It's shocking to me. Us humans, we go and we get a physical checkup, right? Because we want to make sure our health is in good order, right? Yeah. We drive our car into the shop because we want to get a checkup and make sure our car, you know, has, is, is in good shape. But we never get an annual business valuation checkup. So many business owners have never, ever had an evaluation on their business. I'm working with yeah. a guy who's been in business for 45 years, no evaluation ever. So business owners should get an evaluation every year because there are events that can cause your business to increase in value or decrease in value, just like the pandemic that we're in right now, right? Yeah. So you need to know, okay, what's my end game? I'm going to solve for $20 million. What's my current location, my current valuation? Let's say you're worth $5 million, all right? This is a start of a plan. Yep. Now we say, what's my time frame? 10 years. Now we say... Well, who, now you should ask, well, who, the, who are the buyers going to be? Not buyer. So many business owners come to me and say, well, I have a buyer. And I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> you have a buyer and that deal is probably not going to come to fruition. You always want buyers. We always have backup buyers. So then you need to know, okay, who's my buyers going to be? Well, let's sell a buy a $20 million company. It's not going to be a turnaround specialist and it's not going to be a first-time buyer. So now you need to know, well, what's the financial criteria need to be? 
What does the gross revenues need to be? If I want to sell for $20 million, what does my EBITDA have to be, my adjusted EBITDA? Well, it has to be between three to $5 million, right? And then what are the characteristics that I need to build this business on? Uh, what are the characteristics? What are the synergies? Buyers buy synergies. Buyers will sometimes pay more money in a higher multiple for a company that's not making much money if they have the right synergies. Nice. And then you need to know, okay, what's my why? Why do I want to sell a $20 million company? Because if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. And then what you need to do is build your company on what I call the six Ps that we talk about in Exit Rich. Absolutely. And we will send everybody to Exit Rich to go get them to learn about the six Ps. What do you, you give advice every day. What is the best advice you've ever gotten? Um, the best advice I've ever gotten. Hmm. I'm trying to think of what Kevin told me. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wrote the foreword for the book. He did write the foreword for the book. Thank you so much, Kevin. We appreciate that. Yes, you bet. Absolutely. Yeah. I think the best, you know, one of the best things that always resonated with me, I don't know if it's necessarily the best advice, but one of the best things that always resonated to me, for me was, you know, always, instead of looking at things that happen to you, ask yourself, why did this happen for me? Like if we didn't, you know, if, if we didn't get a client we wanted, instead of saying, well, why did this happen? You know, why? maybe it's for a good reason <laughs> that we didn't get that client. So that always resonated with me. You know, if we had, a, if I had a bad day or something didn't go my way, or if I was trying to really hire somebody and I didn't get, you know, didn't get that person, I always ask, well, why did this happen for me, not to me? Mm. Yeah. So Michelle, have you, uh, you know, when you talk, when you, you look at companies like when Facebook started, they were raising billions and they had no sales, right? Now, obviously it's, it's, it's tough to sell a business that doesn't have sales, but how do you deal with companies that are in that growth mode, but they, they need capital and, and, you know, it's, it's sort of future. I mean, it, it's a little more complicated um, than, than a company that's got EBITDA, right? Right. It definitely is. I mean, and you, you know, you look at Facebook and Facebook paid $19 billion for WhatsApp and WhatsApp was hemorrhaging. You know, but WhatsApp had a synergy that Facebook wanted. WhatsApp had a billion users, and right. that's why Facebook was willing to pay 19 billion. So what we do in a, in a situation like that is, is we go to our buyers. We, you know, we find out uh, as much as we can about the business, and we go to our buyers to, to see who's a good synergistic fit and what buyers willing to buy a percentage of the company or, you know, invest in that business. Gotcha. And, you know, it's like SaaS companies. I mean, SaaS companies want to sell for, you know, 20 times gross revenues and they're not hardly, they have no EBITDA at all. In fact, they're losing money. But again, we go to those synergistic buyers that are only in the market for SaaS companies. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. It does. Or I'm going to come to you and say, Kevin, do you want to do this? <laughs> mm -hmm. You want to invest in this business? <laughs> You know, one of the ways that, that, you know, that I look, it's like you said, talk to the buyer, but you said they had a billion um, users. So a yeah. company that's buying like Facebook would say, what would it cost me to acquire a billion users? Yes. And yes. That, that's now they're starting to put some numbers on the value of the acquisition. Right. So, yep. you know, and, and because it, 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 they, like you said, they were hemorrhaging because they had a billion users and, yeah. and, you know, it, it takes time to, to make the, the, the EBITDA happen from there. So we, we talk about that in the valuation section in Exit Rich. We talk about how to evaluate synergies. And one of our P's is proprietary and there's six pillars of proprietary. So we go through the whole, how much money, how do you how do you value a brand? You know, the biggest brand in the world is, do you know who the biggest brand in the world is? Mm -hmm. Apple, $289 billion. That's without EBITDA, that's without assets, inventory, real estate, anything. So we do talk about that, how to evaluate synergies, because there are buyers out there like Facebook that will pay a lot of money for talent, will pay a lot of money for contracts, will pay a lot of money for a brand. I mean, we sold a company for 126% more than what the business appraised for because we had a contract, with, our client had a contract with BP, and it was a strategic buyer that was been trying to get in BP for the last 20 years and could never get in. Right. So we always look at the synergies that our business has and assess a value to that. Plus when we go to market, of course, we're not gonna put a price on it because we know that we're gonna have hundreds of buyers for one business, hence creating the bidding war. Yeah. And buyers will pay more for synergies. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, so that's we, where you go from a five multiple to a 10, to a 15, to a 20, you know, we, by, by, by those synergies, right? We greatly appreciate your time. We know it's incredibly valuable for our folks who wanna get their hands on the book, Exit Rich, where is the best place for us to send them? 
We can go to ExitRichBook.com. You can buy it on Amazon as well, but ExitRichBook.com is $24.79, so it's less expensive. We will email you the digital download immediately. When the book launches, we'll send you the, the hardcover. Plus, we'll give you a lifetime membership into Exit Rich Book Club. And that is where we have lots of video content. We also have documents. So, Kevin, you would appreciate this. Business owners come to me all the time and say, well, I've never seen a sample purchase agreement or LOI or due diligence checklist or closing docs or even organizational charts. Everything you need to run your business or sell your business is in Exit Rich Book Club for your review and download. Those documents alone are worth over $25,000. Plus, we're also giving away 30-day membership into Club CEOs, which is a mastermind where we do Q&As and hot seats and things of that nature for entrepreneurs. Awesome. Well, this has been Seth Green for Sharkpreneur with Kevin Harrington and Michelle Seiler Tucker of ExitRichBook.com. Michelle, thanks again for joining us. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Thank you both. Great seeing you. Good luck. Thank you. We're still in the middle of launch. <laughs> Do you need money to fund your idea, product, or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet, and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free perfect pitch cheat sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.